one of the uh, most useful looping structures in Rebel is called for each. And basically that just goes through a block and does something to each item in the block. So here we're going to create a little, little block. Um, folder is going to be assigned to the block of data that's read from the hard drive from the directory that's read. Like that. And for each item, and again we can use any variable name we want, just as long as we remember what that what that word means. For each item in that block, we're going to do for each of those items, this is what we're going to do, print the item. So for each file in the folder, print that file. Loops through the folder that we just got, that block of data, and prints each of those things. That prints the entire directory. We could also loop through, um, uh, for example, data that's read from a mail server. What this does is for each item in this block, which is read from a mail server, we're going to print each of those mails. Again, for each mail in the block of data that's read from the, um, this email account, we're going to print the, the mails. Um, another common looping structure is while, and what this does is it continues to loop while a condition is true. So while this condition is true, do this block of actions. Here's a common example. Uh, first we're going to define a value, x, the value uh, 1 is assigned to that word, and while x is less than 5, less than or equal to 5, we're going to do this. Um, and that block is going to alert us the value of x, the string value of x. Alert can only take a string, it can only take text, so first we have to convert that number to a string. And then we're going to increment the value of x. And what this does is it says x now is equal to the existing x plus 1. So it's basically adding 1 every time it goes through this loop. We start out x equals 1. While x is less than 5, show us the number, and then increment it 1. Basically, it's going to count to 5. You can see there at the end, x was equal to 6, so the loop ended. It was no longer this condition was no longer true. X was not less than or equal to 5. A couple other little while examples to give you an idea of how, how you can use it. Uh, this is going to request something from the user. And while that's not true, we're going to tell the user to select yes to end the program. So I'm going to put this in. If we say no, it's going to tell us select yes. Select cancel. It's going to say yes. While the value returned by this request is not true, we're going to alert. Now if I select yes, the value is true and the program ends because that condition is no longer true. That can be used in a lot of, a lot of ways. Here we're going to get a date from a user. Today's date. Okay, here's today's date. I'm going to select something different. It's going to tell me, please select today's date. And here's the current date. So what's going on here is um, um, we're requesting some information, request date um, from the user. And while that is not equal to today's date, while that's true, while it's not equal to today's date, every time that we put a date in that's not today's date, it's going to alert us. Um, please select today's date. It's currently here. And again, we use the join function to put all that text together. So if I click the wrong date, please select today's date. If I click the right date, now that condition is no longer true. Today's date was equal to now date, so it ended. Now uh, we can use that to deal with passwords. Um, we're going to request a password from the user. And while that isn't the user and password that we 
want. It's going to say the username and password is secret and the password, or the username is secret and the password is password. So we'll try a couple here. And then something else, and it's going to tell us it's not right. That's not right. This time I'm going to type in secret. And now that condition is no longer true. It, it was equal to secret and password, and so we end the condition. Okay. Here's an example which we won't type in because it'll go on forever, but um, we have a bunch of loops. Forever, we're going to do this, loop this, this block of stuff. Um, we're going to jump through these times. 8 o'clock, uh, 2.40, and 6 o'clock. And for each, um, for each uh, it iteration through that for loop, we're going to do this block, this loop. Um, and that's going to be another conditional, which says uh, if the current time is equal to the timer, uh, say it's now time to feed the cat. Again, we're joining all that text. Um, and that's just going to continually go through each of these times and when the timer is currently that time it'll say hey feed the cat at 8 o'clock at 2.30 and at 6.